So let's look at a couple more examples where we're going to graphically add or subtract complex numbers. And remember, there are two different approaches we can take. We can either draw vectors and add it using that visual method of adding vectors or subtracting, or we can rewrite these complex numbers in terms of their real and imaginary parts and then add or subtract them using arithmetic. And for this first problem, let's use vectors so that we can add these more visually. And remember a vector is an arrow that goes from the origin to the complex number. And these vectors, remember, have some length to them. They have a magnitude and they have an angle relative to the positive real axis. And we have this second vector that's going to our second complex number, Z2. Again, this is just an arrow with a length and an angle to it or a direction. And to add these, the general strategy is that we're going to take the vector that we're adding to the original one and slide it over so that this second vector starts at the end of the first vector. So imagine that this vector is now going to slide essentially up here and we'll look something like that, but let's draw it more carefully. And we will place the beginning of this vector at the tip of this first vector. And notice that we're going to go over 7, so that's 4, 5, 6, 7, and we will go up 1. So that will end right there. But you can visually see that it's basically taking this vector and just sliding it along the purple one so that it perfectly moves along this. And the beginning of this green vector starts where the purple vector ends. And with this we can now figure out their sum. And let's do the sum in a blue color. Now the sum is the beginning of the first vector to the end of the second vector. And that will start at the origin and go all the way up to this point here. So this blue vector, this is just Z1 plus Z2. And we can figure out where that ends. It looks to be at the coordinate three plus 7i, where 3, that's the real part, and 7i, that's the imaginary part. So it looks to be that this is the answer. And of course, the way to check this is to rewrite both your vectors in terms of their real and imaginary parts. This is, excuse me, 7 plus 1i, and this vector z1, this is minus 4 plus 6i. And when writing it like this, we can just now add using arithmetic. We add the real parts, minus 4 plus 7, that's 3, and we add the imaginary parts, 6i plus 1i would give us 7i. So either way you want to approach this, we'll get this exact same answer, 3 plus 7i, and using both methods is a great way to check this. Now let's do one final problem. And for this one, we are subtracting Z1 minus Z2. So let's start by writing both of these complex numbers in terms of their real and imaginary parts. And Z1 looks to be at four plus four I, while Z2 looks to be at four for the real part and minus four I for the imaginary part. And if we wanna find their sum, then we take z1 and subtract z2. Excuse me, we're finding their difference, not their sum. And we know z1, we can rewrite that as 4 plus 4i, and we're going to subtract z2, which is 4 minus 4i. And I recommend writing this in parentheses since we need to distribute this negative. We're subtracting the real part and we're subtracting the imaginary part or in other words, since we're subtracting a negative, we'll be adding the imaginary part. And now just rewriting it without this negative, we will distribute it. We have four plus four i minus four plus four i, since we are subtracting a negative. And lastly, combining 
the real parts and combining the imaginary parts. 4 minus 4 is 0 for the real part. And 4i plus 4i is 8i for the imaginary part. So this is a purely imaginary number. And if we wanted to graph that, that would be right up here. But we can also approach this using vectors. We can check our work. And the vector to z1 will look like that. And you can draw the arrow in if you want. And the vector to z2 looks like this. Now, with subtraction, remember, it's a little bit more complicated. Essentially, we want to find the opposite of z2 and then add that to z1. And the opposite of z2 will be the vector that has the opposite real part and opposite imaginary part. Or you could think of it as rotating this vector 180 degrees and that opposite vector will continue along on a straight line. But we can find it by just finding the opposite real and imaginary parts. So it's the opposite real part is negative 4. The opposite imaginary part is 4, which brings us right about there. And notice it's not drawn perfectly, but you can roughly see that this is a straight line. And let's label this as the opposite of z2. And now we want to add this vector to z1. So we're going to take this vector and slide it along z1 so that it's starting point is at the ending point of z1. And starting at z1, we go left 4 and then up 4. And you can see our difference goes from the beginning of the original vector, z1, and to the end of the opposite of z2, or essentially where this difference actually ended up. So we go from the origin to where they point to. And you can see that would be at 8i. So this is just a nice visual way that we can check that we did our arithmetic correctly. But to plot this point, it would be at 8i.